Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I'm very excited to announce that Parallels Desktop 17 has been released and it's now fully optimized for the M1 Apple Silicon chip. And this version is purported to have 25% better 2D graphics and 28% faster DirectX 11 performance too. So that's 3D games that have been released in the last 10 years. So this is a very exciting proposition. So what I'm gonna be doing is doing an upgrade. So I've got my Parallels Desktop version 16.5.1 here with my Windows 11 installation. So I'm gonna be doing a Parallels Desktop 17 upgrade. So if you if you haven't got Parallels Desktop installed, it's a really great way to run Windows 10 or 11 operating system on your Apple and Apple Silicon Mac. It's got really great game performance too. If you want to see more information about Parallels and the instructions on how to install it, please check out the Parallels article on the Apple Gaming Wiki website, which contains all the instructions. I also have a video tutorial on how to install Windows 11 ARM on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac through Parallels. So if you'd like to follow these instructions on getting Parallels to work on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please follow the link in the description. If you'd like to support the kind of content that I make then please use the affiliate link at the top line of the description of this video if you make a purchase after clicking this link then I'll receive a small cut you'll be helping to support this channel and the work that I do Parallel 17 also has a 14 day free trial so you can just try everything out there's no commitment make sure that this is the right software for you if you have Windows gaming in mind for your M1 Apple Silicon Mac then please make sure to check out this M1 Parallels Windows compatibility list so I'll leave a link to this in the description so this is basically a list of all the games that I've tested through Parallels working on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac and they've just been rated whether they're perfect playable or they run or they just crash all of the games that I have ever tested are listed here if you want to help out and add your own research you can do so no account is required you can just click edit on the page or just add a page. If you have any questions, then please join me on my Discord server. So to do the upgrade of Parallel 16.5, I'm going to log into the website and then go into my account. Then I'm going to sign in. Then I'm going to click on download product files, and then I'm going to find my Parallels Desktop 17. So I'm going to click on this DMG and I'll be downloading this now. So before I do the upgrade, I'm just going to fully quit out of Parallels Desktop and close the control center and click quit Parallels Desktop. So now that my Parallel 17 is downloaded, I'm just going to open in Finder and then double click on the DMG file. I'm just going to close this window and then I'm going to double click on this to install. So I'm going to click open here, type in my password. So here we have Parallel 17 installed. So I'm just going to load up my old virtual machine. It's currently installing Parallels tool, so it might take a little bit of time for this to actually load up. So just let that work for a little bit. So that took a little bit of time just to update. But uh, anyway, we're going to restart this virtual machine again because the Parallels tools, which is a set of features for Parallels interacting with the operating system, is going to wait. So I've logged into my Windows 11 virtual machine and it all seems to be working quite well. So let's talk a little bit about the performance of Parallel 17. So it does seem like the marketing is correct. There is a marked improvement in performance. So when we're looking at the interface elements, for example, in this control panel here, it does feel like there's less latency between a click and something actually happening on screen. And anecdotally, it just feels like it's running much faster. So this is also reflected in the Geekbench 5 score. So on the left, I've recorded my Geekbench score from 16.5.1, which I recorded back in June. Now I've got my Parallel 17 Geekbench score, and you can kind of see that there's quite a substantial difference, especially in the multi-core score. So I've done an extremely scientific, rigorous way of measuring the Geekbench scores, but you can see that there is a marked difference. You can also see that the CPU is marked differently in Parallel 16.5.1. It shows a one gigahertz processor, whereas in Parallel 17 it was showing that we're running a 3.2 gigahertz processor which is quite interesting because there's definitely a little bit more performance from this new version of parallels so the next benchmark i'll be running is hitman absolution and as you can tell the frame rates are quite similar so what's very interesting about this benchmark is that there's only about 0.8 frames per second increase in performance over the average frame rate for this bench however it is the highest speed that i've ever recorded for this particular game on the m1 apple silicon mac so there is a marked difference in performance, however it is not that dramatic. However this still remains a technical marvel. It's amazing that we're actually able to get good gaming performance out of a game that's designed for an x86 operating system running on a virtual machine on an ARM processor. And that itself is a very interesting proposition that is currently only available on Parallels. So the other elephant in the room is about TPM 2.0. So if you've watched my previous videos about Windows 11 ARM and why I think it will never be supported as a bootcamp option for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac is because there is no support for TPM 2.0, which is a kind of hard requirement from Microsoft. 
And one of the worries about virtualizing Windows 11 ARM on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac is the lack of TPM. However, Parallels does support virtual TPM 2.0, and this is part of the Pro package. So you can check this within the actual virtual machine. If we type in tpm.msc and then open up this application, we can actually tell whether the TPM can be enabled or not. So if we have the Pro edition of Parallels, what we can do is shut down the virtual machine. Once we're shut down, we'll have access to the hardware configuration. So we just click on the cog here, and we go to the hardware tab, and then we can click on this plus button here, and we can add a TPM chip. This is only available in the Pro Edition and not the Home Edition. What we can do is add the TPM module here. So this is the virtual TPM, click Add. So once we boot up our Windows 11 ARM virtual machine again, we can go back to tpm.msc, and now we can see that TPM management is detected. So we shouldn't have any compatibility issues with Windows 11 running on Parallel 17. So this does leave open the question about whether the standard edition of Parallel 17 is going to officially support Windows 11, because it doesn't actually officially use the virtual TPM chip. So we can actually install the virtual machine now of Windows 11 without the TPM chip, but when Windows 11 is fully released, we'll be able to get by without this virtual TPM. So just be aware of this when you're making a purchasing decision. It might be the case that come the actual release of Windows 11 later in 2021, that we'll might need this particular edition. And if you don't have this, then you might be stuck on Windows 10 ARM, which is very likely not to receive the same number of updates as Windows 11 ARM going into the future. So this is really just a first look at Windows 11 running on Parallel 17. I'm going to be doing a lot more performance tests. If you have any requests for games or applications that you'd like me to run in the future, please leave a comment. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.